Hey guys, and welcome to the fish room. I'm Rachel O'Leary, and today I have a confession, a fish keeping confession. I am a horrible, horrible hoarder, and I have some more fish to show you guys today. Uh, we're going to be putting them in this 55 gallon for at least a short while before we set them up in their permanent location. I'm going to grab together a few supplies for an unboxing and then we'll tell you what we've got in here. So one of the things that I really like to do as a professional hobbyist is share the love I have for fish. And a lot of times um, my customers come back again and again and again to buy fish and you get to know sort of what people love. And I have one customer in particular whose name's Chuck. You'll probably see him down in the comments section. Um, who loves catfish like I do and more specifically we have in this box some wood cats. Now wood cats are really really unique cool little reclusive catfish. This particular species comes from Peru and a lot of times when you get them in um, they're prone to ick and they rarely do well with treatment. So when I got them in they didn't look great. I wasn't sure how well things were gonna go so I sent them to Chuck for free and said, you know, if you breed them, send me back some babies. And that's what we have today. Now, the neat thing about wood cats is they're exactly what they sound. They're a catfish that likes to hide, and they like to hide in nooks and crannies of wood. And they come from fast flowing rivers um, where it's pretty dark, there's not a lot of plants, and they eat at the surface, usually eating bugs or insects or things like that. But they are without a doubt some of the cutest catfish out there. Uh, and they're interesting for a few other reasons as well. And I'll do a species spotlight once these guys get a little bit bigger. Um, what's One of the things that's really interesting about them is that they do internal fertilization, which means the male has a modified anal fin that he uses for internal fertilization with the female, but then they lay eggs, which is really unusual. And the eggs are large. Um, they, they almost remind me of frog eggs and hopefully these guys will get to maturity and I'll be able to show you all of that. This particular species is Centromoclus perugiae or sometimes called Tatia perugiae, also known as the honeycomb catfish. And you can see that it's because of this beautiful honeycomb pattern that they get. Now it's entirely likely once I put these in the aquarium we won't see them for a few days as they settle in. Now the aquarium I've set up just with jumbles of driftwood all the way up to the surface. The younger these fish are, the more prone they are to stay up near the surface, uh, even when they like to hide. So I tried to provide lots of spots up near that surface where they can be comfortable. As they get larger, they'll move down and further into the aquarium. I've also put a power head in this aquarium because they do come from swift flowing rivers and that oxygen content is really important. Um, so I'm going to grab the camera and I'll show you guys these a uh, little bit closer and then we'll get them in the aquarium. Now you can see how these guys get their name. They have a very distinct honeycomb pattern. This piece of material in the bag is polyfilter which is used to adsorb and absorb the ammonia in the shipping water. Because these guys come from areas of high flow and very dilute waters, it's especially important that the shipping water is kept as clean as possible and Chuck did a great job. I'm going to go ahead and open these up and get them directly into the aquarium. Now I don't want to put the shipping water into the aquarium, um, but it, the thing that's tricky about a lot of species of catfish, and this one in particular, is that these guys have extremely, extremely serrated spines on their pectoral fins, which makes them unsuitable to net. So normally I hand catch these guys. What I'm going to do today is pour out as much water as possible and then take the fish and drop them into the aquarium. Now I'll link to my acclimation video, but you guys, if you've been around for a while, know that I really don't like, um, I don't like doing drip acclimation unless fish are coming from water that's profoundly softer. By hand catching these, I ensure that their pectoral spines don't get trapped in a net. And I can be very gentle. Oh my gosh, they're so stinking cute, I can't even take it. Oh, I'm in love. At one point in my fish room, I don't even know, I, I had catfish in every single aquarium. 
So that worked out pretty well. I have another bag of them to get. Again, there's another bag of them here. They look fantastic. Chuck did a really excellent job. I'm going to go ahead and drop the poly filter into the aquarium as well where it can help minimize any risks of a mini cycle. Now, as you've noticed, the fish have basically disappeared and that's entirely typical for these little catfish. In fact, I'd be more concerned if we could see them. Chuck sent me a nice letter and he also sent me a mop that he made. Um, you can see it has some cork, which will make it float up at the surface. And we'll put this in there for the fish to hide in up near the surface. So this is just a floating square mop, and he's done a really nice job. I've shown you guys before how to make breeding mops, but this is a really nice design, and I really appreciate Chuck sending that to me. So we'll stick that in there, get my hose out of the way, and just let these guys settle in. Now we can see a few of these guys <laughs> not so successfully hiding in the moss here. And while these fish don't come from an area that generally has plants in the wild, they certainly don't mind them, which is why I've left the moss and some ferns in here. Um, in the next couple days when these guys are really settled in, I'll do a feeding video for you. I think you're going to absolutely geek out when you see how they feed at the surface. They are so freaking cool. One thing I wanted to point at right here is that you can sex these guys by the shape of this anal fin. You can see that this one is long and pointy, which means that's a little boy. It's acts sort of like a gonopodium. And the females, instead of having that pointy fin there that's used for internal fertilization, have a fan-shaped fin. So even from this small size, we're able to sex them. Now these will get about two and a half inches, especially the females, which get way fatter than the boys. Um, but again, you know, these aren't a fish that you see a ton of in your aquarium, but when you do, it is absolutely priceless. And they're a species or a family of fish that I will always work with. There's a few species that are on the smaller side, like these little perugiers or honeycomb cats. Centromochus reticulatus is another one, also called the purple oil cat. That's a particular favorite of mine and that I hope to get back into the fish room sooner rather than later. They're another species that I, I placed with a good friend of mine out in California to work on breeding, and he has had gangbuster success. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss updates on any of these species or the new ones that I plan to get in to showcase for you guys. I know a lot of you have been missing my species uh, spotlights, but I can't do them if I don't have fish that I haven't spotlighted. So I'm excited to get in a few here and there in order to have the ability to share that information with you guys. As always, let me know below if you have any comments, suggestions, or questions.